Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design shear connections in RAM Connections Standalone. In this particular video, we are going to show you how to create a new joint and assign a connection template manually. Let's start by creating a new joint in our model. When you're ready to create a new joint, click on the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar, and then click on the Add New Joint icon. Now within the new joint dialog, you're going to select your joint group and your beam to support options. For this particular exercise, I'm going to be creating a beam to support. So this would be a beam to column or a beam to girder type of scenario. Then I can enter the different options that are available to customize the rest of my inputs. Here I'm going to select a beam to column flange option. Once I enter my joint group and my beam to support, I'm going to tell the program I'm ready to enter my data. Now, the new joint dialog from here on out will be customized according to the joint group and joint type that you selected. So different options or different types of connections will yield different types of inputs that you're required to enter. So let's go ahead and customize our beam to column flange input. You can see the joint type of beam to column flange has already been entered by default for myself. Uh, it has an opposite beam or is column end are options that you can go ahead and enter. And then you can enter your beam and column information. For my beam and column, I'm going to select a prismatic member. And let's go ahead and just pull this pull down menu so we can get comfortable with the different type of options we have available. Here you can see you can also select a tapered or a haunched member. What you're also going to notice is that whenever your cursor is within a particular field within RAM Connection Standalone, the help window will be available to give you more information regarding that particular input. If you don't see this help window, go ahead and click on the help button available in this dialog. Let's move on to the section type. Here you can see that we do have a full sections database that is supplied with RAM connection. All databases are organized by group, table, and then items. And we're going to go ahead and select a standard AISC section from the United States group. For this particular exercise, I'm going to select a wide flange section, and then I'm going to select the size. I'm going to go with a W16 by 45. Next, I'm going to go with the material properties of the beam item. Now, just like we just saw for the section properties, we do have a full materials database available within RAM connection. And here I'm going to go with an A992 grade 50. Click OK. Now, with a beam to column flange connection, you have the option to enter a skew angle or a slope angle. And again, we do have some graphics to help you navigate these particular inputs. Finally, we're going to enter our beam setback and tell the program whether we have continuous lateral torsional restraint. Finally, let's go ahead and enter our column information. We're going to go with a W16 by 89 and enter the appropriate material properties. Now, the way the new joint workflow goes is you're going to go ahead and just keep walking your way through the dialogues until you enter all of the appropriate information. So as you can see, what's next is to enter the loading information. Now, if you accidentally selected the wrong joint, you can also return to the joint part of that workflow. Let's go ahead and move on to loads. And again, the loads will be customized based on the type of joint you selected. Now here you're going to be able to see each load condition that you've already created in your particular model. This model contains dead load and live load. And I'm working on shear connections through this series of videos. So let's go ahead and enter some shear reactions. For dead load, I'm going to enter 10 kips. 
and for live load I'm going to enter 30 kips. Now for each field as you place your cursor in the field you should be able to see the appropriate units that are for that particular input. In addition to that over in the help dialog you should also be able to see the standard sign convention all arrows point to a positive reaction. Once we're done let's go ahead and click OK and here our new joint has appeared. In the main window you're going to see the joint that you're currently working on and in the joint selection area you should be able to see the thumbnails for each of the joints that are contained within your model. Now that we've created a new joint let's also show you how to assign a connection template manually. Now in the bottom right hand corner of your screen you should be able to see the connections database that is supplied with RAM connection. If you don't see this particular area, go ahead and select the Home tab in the ribbon toolbar and ensure that this templates option is currently selected. Now all of our connections databases are organized by group, table, and item. For this series of videos, we're going to be focusing on the United States group and then we'll go ahead and select a table. We will be focusing on the tables that are specific for shear reactions. So here what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a shear type of connection template with a BCF at the end of it. BCF means beam column flange. And for this particular exercise I'm going to go ahead and select a single plate connection. Again I'm going to single plate BCF. Now within this area I see all the basic connections that are currently available as predefined connections within RAM connection standalone. The way our nomenclature works is the first piece of information is the type of connection. SP would indicate single plate. Next you have the joint type for which this is applicable. BCF would be beam column flange. Then we'd have the thickness of the plate. I'm going to go with a 3 8 inch plate. And then finally we have the bolting information. The first number would be quantity of bolts. The second number would be diameter of bolts. So I'm going to go with a SP BCF 3 8 inch plates with three 3 quarter inch diameter bolts. Now if this is a connection I want to assign to this particular active joint, I can go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and just click on assign template to current joint. Here I can see that the connection assignment is complete and we'll go ahead and click close. Now once the connection assignment is complete I should be able to see some information over here. Here I could see the shear connection that was assigned and I could see the design code that I was using. In addition to that within the thumbnail area I should be able to see the interaction ratio and status of connection design. Here I can see that my interaction ratio is 1.35 and the controlling combination is D2, my second design load combination. Now if you want to ensure that this is the controlling combination, you're going to go to the Home tab of the ribbon toolbar and just make sure that this option is selected. This will indicate that the critical load condition is currently being displayed. Now for this particular model we can see that this connection that we selected is currently failing. The interaction ratio is greater than 1.0 and it is indicated in red which means this is a failing connection. Now whenever you're assigning connections manually the workflow you're going to utilize is a trial and error process. So we had our first trial it didn't quite work out for us so we need to go ahead and manually select another connection template to override this. Now we do have some automatic connection design options available in RAM connection and we'll get to those in the next series of videos. For now I'll go ahead and select a new connection template. Let's go ahead and try to add an additional bolt. So I'm going to go with a four three quarter inch diameter bolt connection. I'm going to go back to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and tell the program I want to assign the connection. Here I can see the connection graphic has been updated. My interaction ratio has been updated. The interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it is currently indicated in green, which means that this is now a passing connection design. At this point, this concludes our process for creating a new joint in RAM connection standalone and assigning a shear connection 
manually. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.